In today's video, I'm going to explain what Lightroom catalogs are. Now, this is one of the first and most important things that you need to know about Lightroom because Lightroom is a cataloging software. But what does that mean? It means that you've got this little file on your hard drive, Spencer's Catalog. Dot lrcat. Now my name is Spencer, so this is my catalog, but of course you can name yours whatever you want. And this little file is your Lightroom catalog. Basically a Lightroom catalog is a database file. Every single photo that you import into Lightroom has its information stored in this lrcat file. And that's not just little things like whether you gave the photo a one star or a five star rating. It even includes really important things like the post processing settings that you used. So basically, every time that you edit a photo in Lightroom, those edits are stored in this lrcat file. They're not baked directly into the photo, they're stored here instead. And that makes this a pretty intense database file. It's more powerful than it looks. Now what it doesn't contain are your original photos themselves. Those are still safe somewhere on your hard drive, or unsafe I guess, as may be the case for a lot of photographers, and Lightroom does not modify those photos. Let me show you a demonstration. You can see right now I've only got one photo on my desktop and it's called frozenlake.nef and I've added that photo to my Lightroom catalog. At the moment it's the only picture in the catalog. And what I'm going to do is just edit this photo. So I'm going to open it up, I'm going to go into the develop module. And one thing that I've noticed right off the bat is that it has this little airplane trail in it right there and then a little dust speck. It's also kind of a wider angle photo than I intend. So I'm going to crop it at a four by five aspect ratio. I'm gonna crop it significantly, something like that. And I also think that a lot of the color in this photo is a little bit too blue. Uh, this was actually a really nice golden sunrise. So I'm going to make this photo significantly warmer and I'm going to add a little bit of saturation. So here's the final photo. Obviously it's an incredibly quick edit, but what do you think that the photo on my desktop looks like right now? Let's take a look. So I'm gonna minimize Lightroom, and what do you know? None of those edits show up in the original photo on my hard drive. And again, that's because Lightroom doesn't actually modify your original photos. It keeps them completely intact. Instead, all of those edits are only visible when I open Lightroom itself. And you might be thinking, that's kind of weird, right? Like I want to see the edits that I just did to my photo so that I can post the photo online or send it to a friend or whatever you may wanna do. And in fact, you can still do those things. There is a way to get your edits visible outside of Lightroom, but it might not be what you would expect. So let's take another look back at Lightroom. We'll try to find the save button so that I can save all of these edits into my original photo. Let's see how that goes. Probably file save, right? Well, save quick collection, but that doesn't sound right. It does not appear as though there is a file save option. What about edit save? No, develop save, none of those. So then how do I actually bake those edits into a final photo? And the answer, you have to export your photo from Lightroom. And I showed that in the previous video. You just right click, export, export, and then the dialog pops up that allows you to send off that photo wherever you may want it to go. In this case, I'm just gonna send it straight to the desktop again, export, and in just a moment, that photo is going to be visible on my desktop. Let me close out of that. And you can see, I now have two frozen lake files here. One of them is frozenlake.nef, that's the original raw file. And then I've got frozenlake.jpg. And when I open it up, this time it has that four by five crop. It has the extra saturation. In short, this is my final edited photo. And now I can take this JPEG and I can export it to the internet. I can email it to people, whatever I may wanna do. So hopefully that demonstration was clear, but what do you think would happen if I close out a Lightroom and then just delete my catalog file. Just straight into the trash. Seems like I just messed everything up, right? And I did, I lost all those edits that I made, but I actually didn't delete any of my original files. Again, you can still take a look, this frozen lake raw file is still on my hard drive, safe and sound, exactly as it should be. The only thing that I've deleted is all of that Lightroom specific data. It had things like my organization settings and also my post processing for this photo. Still an important thing, I don't want to delete it, but it's not like getting rid of my raw files. And actually that's why people call Lightroom non-destructive software. Non-destructive software means you can edit the picture to your heart's content, you can even delete the Lightroom catalog, and that raw photo stays completely safe. You cannot say the same thing about Photoshop or some other software that lets you save over the original files. 
Now, of course, I still don't want to completely delete that lrcat file because it does have useful information about that photo's post-processing. So I'm gonna restore it real quick and my Lightroom catalog launches again, just like normal. Now, one part of Lightroom which does affect the outside world is this folders section within the library module. And that section of Lightroom lets you create new folders on your hard drive or move photos from one folder to another. And I'm gonna do that right here. Uh, within the desktop, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just gonna call it desktop -ception. So create that new folder, and that's where I'm going to drag my raw image in Lightroom. And then Lightroom actually pops up this dialog that tells me my photo is going to be moved on the hard drive itself. Uh, I already know that. I'm going to click Don't Show Again, and I'm going to Move. After just a moment, that photo now appears in the desktop section folder of Lightroom. And when I minimize Lightroom, close out of this photo, you can see the original Frozen Lake RAW file no longer shows up on my desktop. And instead, I have this new desktop section folder. So I'll open it up, and Frozen Lake is right there. So that's pretty important to realize. That folders section within Lightroom really is the folder structure on your hard drive. Anytime that you create a new folder in Lightroom or you move a photo from one folder to another, it's exactly the same as doing it outside of Lightroom. Now, one more thing that I want to demonstrate is a very easy way to get Lightroom to lose track of your photos. And it all starts with me dragging this frozen lake photo back onto my desktop. Now I'm going to open up Lightroom and the photo is still there, but something seems off. There's this little exclamation mark right there. And when I click on it, it tells me that the frozen lake raw file could not be used because the original file could not be found. Now, before I try to locate it, let me show you what that actually means in context. So I can still click on the photo, still do full screen. However, when I try to zoom in, you can tell it's very pixelated. And the photo is not going to get any clearer because this is just Lightroom's preview of the image. It's not the actual raw photo. I'm only looking at the cached version that Lightroom created. So I'm going to zoom back out. Now what happens when I go into the develop module? Well, interestingly, I can still edit this photo and my edits that I already made are still showing. For example, if I want to increase contrast, I can do that just fine. But one thing that I can't do is right click and then export this photo. As you can see, the export dialog is completely grayed out. And that's because Lightroom doesn't know where your raw files are unless you move them within Lightroom itself. So, and I cannot stress this enough, if you're using Lightroom, you've got to commit to doing all of your organization of your folders within Lightroom. Otherwise, you're gonna be moving around your photos here and there, and those photos are very easily going to show up as missing in Lightroom. And that can actually take quite a bit of time to find those individual missing photos. Here's how I'm gonna do it with this one. It's actually quite easy when it's just one photo. Go back to the library module, take a look at this exclamation mark again, and then locate. And of course, it's on my regular desktop, so I can just go desktop and frozen lake raw file, click it, and now, of course, no photos show up in the desktop section folder. I can go one level higher, and I now see this photo, the exclamation mark has disappeared, and my full photo is visible again. And along the same lines, if I'm outside of Lightroom and I delete a photo, I'm gonna get that same exclamation mark that tells me Lightroom doesn't know where the photo is. So instead, if you want to delete a photo, you just do it inside Lightroom the proper way. You click the delete key, this dialog pops up and it tells you specifically, you can either delete the file from the disk or you can simply remove it from Lightroom's catalog while keeping the raw file intact. And in this case, I'm going to delete it completely from the disk and now no photo shows up here and if I minimize Lightroom, the photo is now gone from my desktop as well. So yeah, pretty easy. That said, Lightroom catalogs can actually get really complicated, especially if you're working with multiple catalogs or you're trying to use the same catalog on more than one computer. Now I'm gonna cover all of that more advanced information in a future video, but for now, let's just take a look at the Lightroom catalog settings. And those are found when you pull up Lightroom Classic and then Catalog Settings. The first section just says general, and everything in the general panel is actually quite basic. Uh, the information right here is really just information about my Lightroom catalog. If I don't know where it is, I can click show under the location, and it just pops up where on my hard drive this is located. But I already know that, so I'm going to X out. One thing that I do want to point your attention to is this size section right here. Now it says that my current Lightroom catalog is 1.63 megabytes, and of course that's quite small, but I also don't have any photos imported yet. However, even when you do have a bunch of photos in your Lightroom catalog, the catalog file itself, that LRCAT file on your hard drive, 
really does not get all that large. Personally, on my main hard drive, I have north of 40,000 photos, and yet my Lightroom catalog file is less than a gigabyte. And that's actually quite impressive because the photos themselves take up several terabytes. So now let's jump down to this backup section. Uh, this is where you would back up your Lightroom catalog. Now this simply means that it copies that LR cat file so that you have a duplicate in case your regular catalog file gets corrupted or you delete it or something else happens to it. Now personally, I back up my catalog from time to time, uh, maybe about every month or so, but I at least recommend backing it up occasionally because you might as well. Again, this file just does not take up very much space. And at the moment it's set for once a week when exiting Lightroom, but you can set it to whatever you want. So I'm going to close out of that backup section and go to file handling. Now these might seem important because it talks about pixels and preview quality, but none of that actually matters really. I just tend to leave it at the defaults. And the reason is these settings only affect the preview of your file. Remember when I moved that photo and Lightroom had the exclamation mark, it didn't know where that photo was, it still had that preview that was left. Now that is what you're picking with these settings. Uh, Standard preview size can be whatever you want. The larger ones are going to take up a little bit more space in your Lightroom cache. So that's why I just tend to leave it a little bit lower resolution and medium quality. But again, that really doesn't matter all that much. So whatever you prefer, you can easily set there. This import sequence numbers thing, really not that important. Just leave it at the defaults. Uh, the metadata section is a little bit more interesting though. The one setting that I recommend checking, although I, I will go back at some point in a future video and talk about this XMP file section, but the one that I recommend checking is automatically detect faces in all photos. And the reason why that one's important is if you take pictures of people, Lightroom can group those photos based on who is in the photo. And that way you can just find those pictures more easily, especially if you've got a client who you're trying to deliver to. And yeah, that does it for the catalog settings. Uh, you can definitely just close out of that now. And in the next video, I'm going to cover importing photos into Lightroom and all of the settings associated with that. So thanks for watching this one and stay tuned.